the Bible. They are words of Scripture, Lord God, that may help save or redeem someone. We ask this blessing in His almighty name, Jesus Christ. Bear with me. I not necessarily have a cold, but I've been sneezing all this morning. I've been up all night. Um, my family is not here, which some of you might know. This is nothing serious. Nothing like any other problem families might be having during this time of year with school and all. But my wife had to stay home with the kids in order to take care of a few things. But I ask that you pray for her as I am praying for you. Like I say, nothing serious. Come on out of the way. But as though anything is concerned. Please call me. That's right. They could be sick with a cold. I'm going to pray and ask you to pray for them. But if they were dying of a disease, I'm going to do the same. God answers all prayer. For a few moments, I, I want to preach a sermon. And um, it's coming from Psalms 37, verse 3. Something short, something sweet. If you can, please stand for the word. Uh, Psalms 37, verse 3. The concept and my idea is coming from a short passage, not the full scripture. But these words are read. Trust in the Lord. Let see. Repeat after me. Trust, Trust in the Lord. In the Lord. Amen. That seems easy, and in a sense it is, it seems little to do, but it carries a lot of weight to it. Because when you trust in something, you put faith in and you put sacrifice behind it. Trust in the Lord. The Bible says, without faith it is impossible to please God. That's right. Hebrews 11 and 6. Proverbs 3 and 5 say, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Okay. Once we have faith, it isn't something that we can put on a shelf or like an award or an achievement that we've accomplished. Faith is like a muscle. It has to be exercised. It has to be strengthened. It has to be tested. Right. I think it's safe to say that Wherever you put your, whatever you put your faith in, is what you put your trust in. Amen? Amen. Bear, bear with me, bear with me. One, one second. just giving you a demonstration of faith. When I came in this morning, I had no indication that the lights, which usually work, are working. Could have been a shortage. One could have worked, another one could I didn't come in examining. No one sat out in that chair and looked it up and said, wait a minute, let me see. Let me see the school. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Oh, man, oh. No, no. We just came and sat. That's the kind of faith that we need mm. with God. That's right. Unwavering. Amen. Full fledged. Yes. Trusting in God. This is a familiar, it sounds familiar, this, this term, trusting in God. It is a motto that is inscribed on all of our money, mm. our coins, our paper. It was first referred to in the Star Spangled Banner by Francis Scott Keyes, 1814. In the last part of the song, it says, God is our trust. But it was revised, shortened to, in God we trust. And then it was placed on money because of its increased religious sentiment existing during the Civil War. We were at war. Isn't it amazing how a man, a true man, is going to draw to God? These were the founding fathers. And what better to put an, an emblem or a symbol of, of, of trusting the Lord and in the Lord than in on money? Everybody's going to have some or try to get some or want some or is going to see some in their lifetime. So whenever you pick up money, don't just spend it. Look at it. Examine it for what it's worth, for its value. Not the value of the money, but in God we trust, not the money. 
In order to trust in God, we must first know who God is. Oh, yeah. Psalms 46 and 10 says, stand still and know that I am God. What that means is don't panic or lose faith in, 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 in situations or, or lose uh, in, in critical situations. But stand still and allow God to be sovereign and in control. And he will see you through. For whatever you put your faith in is what you put your trust in. Now watch this. We need to have faith in God regardless of the apparent outcome of the situation. Daniel was in the dying stand. He, he kept the faith. The three Hebrew boys were walking in a furnace, fiery furnace, and they kept the faith. Here's the key. When trials and tribulations beat you down, and they will, focus not on the hole that the trials put you in. Just continue to focus on him who holds you when you're in the hole. And trust in his power. This morning we're going to look at three areas of trust. Trusting in God. The first one, trust in His power. The second one, trust in His wisdom, His time. Genesis 14, the Bible says uh, that God is so powerful that with one blast of His nostrils, He opened up the Red Sea so that Israel could exit Egypt. So powerful in Joshua 10 and 12 that he made the, the earth to stand still so that Israel could be victorious in battle. And, and I thought that was a movie. I thought that was all fake, the day the earth stood still. <laughs> so powerful that after four days dead, he brings Lazarus back to life, breaking all the laws of nature. Lazarus walks out without stench of decomposition or stiffness of rigor mortis. That's power. It's not because I account myself healthy because I do push-ups or you might run two or three miles or you might lift weights. That's not the power that keeps us. It's because of his power that I am made powerful through the Holy Spirit. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens, Strengthens me. Amen. We must... Trust in his power. We must also trust in his wisdom. His wisdom. God knows all things. There's nothing he doesn't know. He was, is, and is to come. He's the beginning and the last. The Alpha and the Omega. Isaiah 14 said, Who has directed the spirit of the Lord, who has counseled him or, or taught him knowledge. God doesn't know one thing more than he knows another thing. He knows all things equally. He's never uh, discovers anything. He never wonders about anything. He's never surprised or amazed at anything. He, he's known me from the foundation of the world before my mother knew me, before I was in my mother's womb. Now, a lot of people would look at this passage and say, man, if I had that knowledge, if I had this, that knowledge to, to, to tell the future or, or to do this and that, I could help so many people. I don't, I don't think, no. we, we are man. We would misuse it. How would we misuse it? First of all, you know what the Christian is going to say, man, if, if I had that power, man, I, 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 would, I would know what the lottery is going to be. <laughs> man, when, I, when I hit that billion dollar mark, you know, Chris is going to say, I would give the church a tenth. Wait a, wait a, wait a minute, because they're going by that tithe, man. Well, if, if you're going to hit, it's wrong for you to play a lot of first, first of all. That's wrong for you to do anyway. That's not putting no trust in God. When you are playing the lottery, you are saying, well, I need to do something to, to access my income, stretch my income, and I'm not making enough, and and my boss is not giving me enough, so I'm going to step out of the realm of faith, and I'm going to work on a little luck because I, I, don't, I don't forget what the averages are, but it's astronomical that some person wins. But when they win, they win big. I just, if, if you know what they say. My wife jokes with me. She said, we would be sitting down watching TV, and it would come across the board. She said, baby, baby, I forget. I forget what 
what? I forgot to pray. We what? Pray live. Well, we'd hit that. We'd get past the amount at a new church. <laughs> well, look, 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 look. And, uh, <laughs> this is just me. This is just me trying to get around. I'm going to say, well, look, I'm not going to play. But if you hit. <laughs> No, we ain't giving the path to Timothy. We'll give 20%. Right. <laughs> it's wrong if it's wrong. <laughs> no, we need to trust in God in all things. And lean not to our own understanding. Amen. Trust in him and in his wisdom because he, he knows all things. He, he knows what's around the corner. He, he, uh, uh, I, I brought a prop with me and uh, I had forgot it. And I'm going to use something else. I'm going to do a demonstration. No, the lines is getting ready to uh, break out this theatric, theatrical part of our Christian life. Oh, I, well, I, I want to begin it. These kids are going to be active. So I think I'll start something today. Now, I had a chord, mm -hmm. a thin chord. I forget. I said, I had some thread of a cop because you couldn't see it. Because I wanted something. You couldn't see I need it. I need a participant. Participant. <gasps> Come on, come on. Oh, come on, come on. 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 Come <laughs> Mess up my sermon now. Okay, okay, okay. This is this is faith in action. This is faith in trusting in God. Now this is my child. My child has it would be considered the prodigal child. You, you know the story of the prodigal child. He he's ran off and, and he wants to live his life to the hill the way he wants to, to live it. I've raised him in a church home. I did all that I can do to stand. Now all I can do is stand and that's what the word tells you. I can't beat myself up. I can't worry myself sick because that would make me ill. Yeah. And then I, I, I have a child who's out there who might be in anything, could be in jail. I'm at home. I can't help him because my hair coming up. I'm sick. Now, now open the door. Open the door. Lord, the second one. Lord God, be with him. No matter what he does, Lord God, right, I know right. he's wrong. I, I know he, he doesn't know you like he should, but I planted that seed. Mm, all right. and I planted that seed in him, Lord. And, and although I can't see him, I, I know you got your hand on That's him. Lord. Right. I want you yeah, to protect right. him from all of her promises. Yeah. Lord, Lord, even if he goes to jail, Lord, I want you yeah. to put your head around him like, yeah. like, like, like you yeah. did Job, Lord God. So yeah. he comes out straight like he's supposed to be, Lord God. But wherever he's at, Lord God, that he knows that you are God. Mm. Now, now, that, that, that's faith. Mm. That's the strength of faith and prayer. And, and that's, that's being active in your prayer. You're, you're putting it out there and your faith. You're putting it out there and you're leaning on it. All right. You're not just saying, well, yeah, yeah, you still worry. We're in the flesh. We're human. You yes. still worry about yes. it. Yes. But you still pray. Amen. So who was that? We had, who was our former keyboard, keyboard who wrote a song? If you're going to worry, if you're going to pray, don't, don't worry. worry. If you're going to pray, don't worry. That's kind of hard to do. Now, now. Oh, I'm sorry. Vel, you come on out. <laughs> you come outside, sir. You come on out. If you're going to pray, don't worry. Just take a look. Just take a look. Now, now, we're human. We're in the flesh. Things happen. You can have a seat. Thanks, sir. Would you, would you please would you just put that over there somewhere? You know, we're in the flesh. We are affected by the extremities because, like I say, we're in the flesh. We are being tempted, we are being tested, we are being being teased by Satan. And, and and one could say, well, I've heard a person over the weekend say, look, I'm tired of praying. I've been praying. I say, you know, I'm saying to myself, because I didn't know him, I heard him talking on the side, and I'm saying to myself, I was there one time. You know, you, you pray so much, and, and, and what you see as being something being done or happened, it hasn't happened. But I, I had to grow in the maturity of my spirituality to say to myself, okay, it hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. But but in the spiritual realm, Lord just said, you put it out there. He said, let me deal with it. Let me worry about it. Cast your troubles on Jesus. And that's what we have to do. When our kids go astray, when problems arise, when situations overcome us that we can't physically or mentally or financially seem to handle, yeah. what do we do? Go ahead and vote. Now, when, when the problem gets too big and we're worrying too much, 
who was it? The psychedelics, the bigger the problem, the bigger the people, the bigger the problem, the more I go down on my knees. Right. The longer I pray. Yeah. You know, there are positions for prayer. You can pray here. You can pray here. You can pray with your eyes open. But but the most humble position of prayer is, is to, to get on your knees, stretch out your arms, and lay fat like a cross on the ground, saying, Lord, I, I appear to you as nothing. Hear my prayer. And God will answer. Yes. Wisdom. Wisdom. God knows all. God sees all. He knows what's around the corner. He's going to deal with that situation. We, we pray to God today. We put prayers in the bank. Not like money. So we can pull it out tomorrow. We put it in Tuesday in 96. So we can pull it out with interest in 98. It's called being staying prayed up. Lord, hear me. Lord, follow my son. And one thing about it, God's word never comes back void. No matter what happens, you cannot look God in the face and say, you didn't hear me, God. You didn't answer my prayer. That's why we should end every prayer if the Lord will and the creek don't rise. God will hear. God will see. The third thing, we need to trust in his timing. Now that's hard for us as humans to do. We live in a microwave age. Everything is wanted or needed yesterday. God's time is not like man's time. And while man is thinking, God has already thought. God's time is precious. It's never too soon for him to come. He's never too late for him to come. But because we are in the flesh and we have an expiration date, God is immortal. You want to know... What time is God? God is time and time is God. We might be waiting on something what, what appears to be a lifetime. What does the scripture say? A thousand years is like what a day? All we have to do is pray and wait. He that waits on the Lord shall renew their strength. Patience, patience. We want everything yesterday. Advance on our money, our paycheck, instant credit, rapid refund. We, we'll take the hit. We just want it here and now. Everything right here and right now. I think I told you a story about, I um, well, some of you might be new to the communication, about my wife. We, we rode south, and uh, it was Thanksgiving, and, and my mother down south, man, she broke out some, some, some chitlins that was in the freezer for, uh, for a year or so ago, it wasn't children's season, and man, I'm the best children. I hadn't eaten children since she had left maybe about 30 years ago. So I warmed them up, and my sister was on the stove. My mother was sitting down reading, and she had glasses like these. And I'm, at that time, I wasn't wearing glasses, I'm getting old. But she had her bifocals on, and she was about 80 something. She was sitting here, like just reading. My sister was on the stove, and she was cutting up the best cabbage and okra that I've tasted in a long time. I know I'm making it in my water. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm, I'm sitting down reading the paper, reading a book or something, man. So the word came up. We got the ham, we got the chitlins, and we got the cabbage and something else. And uh, the word came up about corn. And she says, I don't know. She said, did you... Who gonna make the cornbread? And so my wife, bless her heart, wants to be part of the mix. I mean, we all family now. You know, she's been knowing my mother for a few years, and it's the first time she went south with us. The heat killed her. She's from Louisiana. The heat killed her the first time she went. I don't, I don't understand. That's a different kind of heat to Louisiana. We down there, so she gonna step up her game. She said, look, I, I, I'll do the cornbread. And so my sister was looking, flipping the cabbage, and she looked up and smiled, and my mother kind of handed the smile. And then my, I was, I was just reading my book, and then my, my wife said, where the Jiffy Nuts? <laughs> <laughs> and my sister stopped flipping the cat. My mother, who was reading the book, did like this. <laughs> my, they went back to normal after a couple of seconds, but, but my wife, and she felt kind of funny. But, but, but what I'm getting at is, is everybody, we're on a time. We're on a time. Our life is on a time. With the 
advancements in technology, everything is just that they're getting a phone look like every year, and then the previous phone is obsolete. I mean, the turnover is right. You know what? We're getting too much information. Amen. But, but some things you need to wait on. You need to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on them real cabbages, that real cornbread. Because <laughs> that's, she can hook it. Don't, don't get me wrong. My wife of Louisiana, she can't cook. She can, she can batch up that with some meal and some jiffy mix because they make it cook quick. And, and you, you couldn't tell the difference. But man, when you tell a son, you tell a son, some jiffy mix. <laughs> Oh, they were about to bless her out of the Holy <laughs> Time, time. Our time is not God's time. His time is precious. God can, can stop a clock. He can start a clock. Why? Because God is time. He that waits on the Lord shall renew their strength. He will keep us even in the midst of the storm. So before I, I go to my seat, I just want you to understand that, that God hears your prayer. God knows you're surfing like he did Israel. What, 400 years? Is the scripture said 400 years we suffered. Hasn't God, he, he hears you. But we have to do things in, in God's time. It was a purpose for they were in the situation they were in. God's time. We must trust in his power, yeah. knowing that he can do anything with faith. All we got to do is trust him and stand on his word. Even if it appears that it's not going to happen, it's not happening. We've got to be like Job and say, okay, okay, even look, 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 even if he slay me, I'm still going to yes. trust him. Yes. Because I, I'm headed to, to the home front. I'm right. headed to the glory land. Amen. I'm a child of God. And, and what makes me a child of God? My faith. My trust in Him. Our wisdom. His trust. His power. His knowledge. He knows all things. There's nothing He doesn't know. Right. He knew me when I was in my mother's womb. He knew that, that one day I, I, I was going to step out on faith and trust Him. He knew me, uh, 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 a young boy who who was a, a, a gentleman of, of, of perdition, of destruction, who, who walked the streets and, 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 uh, of destruction and dismay. Until one day, one day, he, he pricked my spirit. And he told me to come on in. He said, I, I, I'm going to call you out because you, you're one of the chosen. All right. He called me like he called Simon, son of John. Simon, son of John, feed my sheep. Mm. Right. And he did the same right. thing to me. Right. He said, Jerome Kenny. Son of Malene, Kenny. Come on out. Yeah. I want you to preach my word. I, I, I didn't know I would be here today. I didn't know I would be in this position. By no means. Me, a preacher, I've seen guys on the street, and they know what I used to do. I was a, a little hustler. And, and they would ask me, hey, hey, Kenny, you, you still doing that? And I'm thinking they talking about preaching. And I said, yeah, yeah. He said, all right, all right. Wow, wow. No, 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 no. What you mean? I said, no, I'm preaching. Now, I'm, I'm a child of God, and I ain't ashamed of the gospel. Amen. That's right. And then, yeah. come here, come here. I want to tell you something. Yeah. Do you know yeah. there's a yeah. living God? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know there's someone, yeah. someone who will touch you, who will slap you up, lift you, turn you around, and place your feet on solid ground? Do you know there's a God yeah. in heaven? You see this child God over 2013 years ago for the purpose of, of saving me. Yes. Yeah. I'm not nobody special. Bell ain't nobody special. Sister Elon ain't nobody special. We're all special in God's eyes because His Spirit is in us. He put it in us before the foundation of the world. Amen. And then when He called us out, He said, Come on in. Yeah. All of my sheep, yeah. come on in. Yeah. You know my name. Yeah. God can do anything but fail. He has power. He has wisdom. He has knowledge. Know Him. Know him. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. amen.